topic that we are going to discuss today it is the law of mass action so let's have a look at what does mean by law of mass action and who just proposed these laws of related to the mass action so basically in the year we have 1864 the two scientists whose name was or the two chemists whose name was Goldberg and the second was Peter Wedge these two scientists proposed the law that is known as the law of mass action proposed the law it is known as law of mass action what does this law tells us about so let's have its statement and the statement is very important as this law states that the speed or the rate of chemical reaction speed or the rate of reaction is directly proportional to the product of the product of molar concentration these molar concentrations are also known as active masses and molar concentrations of reacting substances so this was the statement that we have simply going to explain the speed of a reaction is directly proportional to the product and product of the molar concentration of the reacting substances it means if we have a reaction then how we can measure its rate it is directly proportional to the molar concentration molar concentration of the reacting species means it is directly proportional to the reactants of that chemical reaction so this was a simple statement of the law of mass action now next the new term is active masses what does mean by active masses have a look on the active masses basically the active masses are the molar concentrations active masses these are also known as molar concentrations these are represented in the unit that is mole per dm cube this is the concentration of reactants or the concentration of products so when we explain the concentration of reactants or products or when we take concentration of reactants and products in mole per dm cube then these are known as active masses or the molar concentration of the substances and this we just take only for the dilute solution as well we can take it for the dilute solution and it is expressed in the term of square brackets we can express it in the term of square brackets so in the square brackets are like we have this so we can take the active masses or the molar concentration in these square brackets and the unit is mole per dm cube so this is the active masses next let's consider a reversible reaction that is going to explain the law of mass action we have a reversible reaction in which a plus b are the reactants these are the reactants and c plus d are the products a plus b is going to change into the reactant this reaction is known as the forward reaction and when c plus d is going to change into a plus b this is known as the reverse reaction so we have two reactions forward and forward and reverse reaction so let's have a look on the explanation of the law of mass action for example we have the active mass or the molar concentration molar concentration of a is equal to a and we have 
the molar concentration of B is equal to as B. So these are the reactants. Next, if we have the active mass or the molar concentration of C is like in the square brackets and then we have molar concentration of D that is in the molar concentration brackets or the active mass is like D. So here we have basically four substances A, B, C and D in mole per dm cube. These brackets are going to show their concentration in mole per dm cube. So now according to the law of mass action we have according to the according to law of mass action that was proposed by Peter Wage and C. M. Goldberg law of mass action that the rate of forward reaction the rate for the forward reaction is directly proportional to the molar concentration of reactant A or the reacting species A and B and then if we have the removal of this proportionality constant then we can gain the rate of the forward reaction now is equal to the Kf where Kf is the proportionality constant Kf into A and molar concentration of B so this is the product of reacting substances next we have the similar for the reverse reaction this was for the forward reaction now we have for the reverse reaction so the reverse reaction we have the rate of reverse reaction is directly proportional to the r and small r is going to show the reverse is directly proportional to the c concentration and molar concentration of d if we are going to remove the proportionality constant then we can get that is equal to k r and c into d concentration and when we gain the equilibrium state we have see that the rate of forward reaction at equilibrium at equilibrium we see that the rate of forward reaction rate of forward reaction becomes equal to the rate of reverse reaction reverse reaction so therefore we can write it as rf is equal to r r where rf from the previous section we have kf a concentration a molar concentration of b it is equal to kr molar concentration of c and the molar concentration of d so here we have the first equation it is going to show the concentration of products and reactants as well thus from this consideration it is clear that the reaction is the reaction is proportional to the molar concentration molar concentration of reactants for the forward reaction and if it is for the reverse reaction then it will be equal to the molar concentration of the products so this was the simple explanation about the law of mass action i hope you guys understand and if you have any queries you can ask me about that in the comment section for that time have a good day and a lot of